Picture a demolition. You're probably thinking of explosions, a wrecking ball, and clouds of dust, right? A loud, messy, chaotic process. Now, picture this. A 40-story skyscraper in the middle of Tokyo seems to just melt silently into the skyline over a few months. It looks like a visual effect, but it's real. In one of the busiest cities on Earth, massive buildings are vanishing without anyone really noticing. This isn't science fiction. It's an engineering revolution that's so quiet and clean, it's hard to believe. So how on Earth are they doing it? To get this quiet revolution, you have to get the problem. And the problem is trying to build or unbuild anything in a place like Tokyo. It's one of the most densely packed cities in the world, where buildings Buildings are squeezed together so tightly that a single falling bolt could cause a disaster. Swinging a wrecking ball or setting off explosives next to offices and homes is basically unthinkable. Japan saw a huge construction boom in the 20th century, which gave it the modern skyline we know today. But buildings have a lifespan. Many of the towers from that era are getting old and need to come down. How do you erase a giant from a city that never sleeps? without causing total chaos. The answer came with the demolition of an icon, the 40-story Grand Prince Hotel Akasaka. When its time was up, everyone expected noise and disruption. Instead, nothing happened. Day by day, the hotel just got a little shorter. Week by week, it sank below the other buildings until, after about six months, it was gone. The city barely blinked. This wasn't magic. It was the public debut of an incredible technique known as the Tekarep system. The basic idea behind this shrinking building method is surprisingly simple. Instead of demolishing from the outside in, you take it apart from the inside out and the top down. The genius is how they contain it all. Engineers start by building a cap over the top few floors. Think of it as a hidden factory in the sky. They keep the building's original roof and seal the whole section, making it soundproof and dustproof. From the street, it just looks like some minor rooftop work is going on. Inside this controlled space, workers start carefully deconstructing the building, piece by piece. No wrecking balls, no explosives. They unbolt steel beams, cut floor slabs into sections, and remove columns. Small cranes, all working inside the cap, lift these pieces and lower them down through a shaft in the middle of the building. Nothing ever gets dropped outside. The results are pretty amazing. This process is so quiet that noise levels outside are cut by as much as 23 decibels. And dust, one of the biggest headaches of demolition, is reduced by an incredible 90%. It's a demolition site that doesn't feel, sound, or look like one. So, the work happens in a box on the roof, but how does the building actually get shorter? This is where it gets really clever. The entire cap, the roof, the cranes, the workers, sits on a set of massive hydraulic jacks, which are propped up by the building's own columns. After workers have cleared a floor or two inside the cap, those hydraulic jacks kick in. But instead of pushing up, they slowly pull in, lowering the entire factory down to the new, lower level. From the outside, you don't see the drop. The building just looks like it shrank by a couple of floors. They repeat this process again and again, floor by floor. The skyscraper is eaten from the top down by the factory sitting on it. For the Grand Prince Hotel Akasaka, this meant the building got about 34 feet shorter every 10 days. It's a slow, methodical process that feels more like a controlled, reverse construction than a demolition. It also minimizes vibrations, which means it's safe enough to do right next to a busy subway station or an occupied office building. And if that wasn't impressive enough, the Tikarep system has another trick up its sleeve that makes it one of the most sustainable demolition methods on the planet. It generates its own power. All those heavy materials, steel beams, concrete slabs, have to be brought down from hundreds of feet in the air. In a normal demolition, that's just wasted energy. But here, the engineers saw an opportunity. They created a regenerative braking system, just like the one you'd find in an electric car. As a heavy piece of steel is lowered down the central shaft, the crane's motor acts as a generator. It captures the gravitational energy from the falling object and converts it into electricity. That power is then sent right back into the grid to run the lights and tools inside the cap. So the demolition literally helps power itself. This massively reduces the project's carbon footprint. It's a brilliant, closed-loop system where the building's own weight pays an energy dividend as it disappears, a feature so innovative it's considered a world first. This obsession with precision, quiet, 
and efficiency is more than just smart engineering. It's also a reflection of Japanese culture, the method's respect for public space, its focus on not disturbing the community, and its harmony with the environment are all deeply valued. In a culture that prioritizes order and consideration for others, a loud, messy demolition is seen as a major disruption. The shrinking building method is the exact opposite. It's respectful, clean, and almost invisible, letting the city go on with its life. This thinking also applies to what happens after the building is gone. Because the materials are so carefully taken apart, instead of being smashed, they are way easier to recycle. Over 90% of the steel, concrete, and other materials are sorted on site and sent for reuse, turning a demolition site into a source for future construction. It transforms the act of tearing down a building into something thoughtful and intelligent, and it fits perfectly with a modern vision for a sustainable, circular economy. It's an amazing example of rethinking something we all thought we understood. What other seemingly settled technologies do you think are ripe for a complete reinvention? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. So, the next time you see a skyscraper in Japan that looks like it has a cap on it, look closer. You might not be watching a new building go up, but the quiet, dignified end of an old one. Japan's skyscrapers are secretly shrinking thanks to a philosophy that demands a better way. A way that's quieter, cleaner, and smarter. This isn't just about tearing down buildings. It's about reimagining our relationship with our cities. It shows that even the most destructive processes can be engineered to be gentle, sustainable, and almost poetic. As more of the world's cities deal with their own aging buildings, this silent, shrinking method from Japan might just be the blueprint for the future of demolition. A future where giants can vanish from the skyline, leaving almost no trace they were ever there.